It's the Security Weekly News, and it's episode 372, which looks like it adds up to 12. I don't know, 3 plus 7 plus 2, I don't know, 3, 22, I, it beats me. But I'm Doug White, and it's the Security Weekly News. Welcome to the week of 24 March 2024. We've got Patrick Stewart, Colorama, Strel, Strela Stealer, Stiel, ah, oh, say that three... Ah, I can't even say say that fast three times. Strella Steeler, CVS Escorts, Chuds, Josh Marpet, and more on this edition of the Security Weekly News. This is a Security Weekly production for security professionals by security professionals. Please visit securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe to subscribe to all the shows on our network. It's the show that keeps you up to date on the latest security news twice a week. Your trusted source for accurate security information and expert analysis. It's time for the Security Weekly News. On Business Security Weekly, each week we address the challenges facing CISOs through our guest interviews, including former and active CISOs. Our news segment is focused on leadership and communications to better help security leaders translate and communicate security risks into business risks. Jason Albuquerque, Ben Carr, Tyler Robinson, and others add their expertise to the conversation. I'm Matt Alderman, and I hope you search for Business Security Weekly in your favorite podcast catcher and subscribe to download our latest content. All right, live from exile on the island of Elba, it is the Security Weekly News, and I'm Doug White, and it's not really very spring-like outside. I, I went outside earlier to chase my cat who escaped, and it was really, no, not very spring-like at all. Well, Colorama is a utility that makes ANSI escape sequences work on Windows, something that uh, when you're building websites and things, you, you might want to do. And it has more than 150 downloads every month. So this is a big one, right? And you know where it's going. So some attackers cloned the tool and then embedded malware into it and then set up a domain that was close to the real thing such that developers could be fooled into downloading the malware version of the popular tool, Colorama. But it didn't stop there. The attackers actually hijacked some high-profile accounts, including the GitHub editor, uh, or the GitHub editor dash syntax. So this is like a high-level account, which is the maintainer of top.gg search and discovery platform for Discord. Yeah. So using that account, which uh, I guess a lot of people might trust, the attackers then added a malicious commit to the top G, the top dash gg python sdk repository so now the thing is in like everywhere and they added instructions to download the malicious clone of colorama and starred their github repositories to increase the visibility of it oh geez well the top gg account they said was likely hacked via stolen cookies which you know okay but uh, so, so it's really hard to stop this stuff, right? And Checkmark said, quote, by manipulating the package installation process and exploiting the trust users place in the Python package ecosystem, the attacker ensured that the malicious Colorama packager would be installed whenever the malicious dependency was specified in the project's requirements. <laughs> oh, and then you immediately want to go look at all the stuff you've got in PyCharm and go, how many different packages do I have installed? Oh. Uh, Maybe I should remove them all. But the malware is a, basically an info stealer initially, but it could, of course, do other things since it's now installed. It's probably running as admin. Yeah. I think we're just really going to have to sit down at some point and figure out how we sign upstream and downstream on these kind of packages that we all know and love and protect these repositories because this is just going to keep happening. It's very easy to do. It, it's it's and you know these guys typo squatted the domain and you know you're sitting there you need something you go click it and instead of faker you download fake ear and you know next thing you know you and of course you you know typo squatting doesn't have to be even that ridiculous it can literally look like the right name it's just they've got an e with umlauts over it or something it doesn't get displayed in most browsers and poof you know so i love repositories i love all the cool things they can do but I usually only run these things in sandboxes because, you know, even if it doesn't seem to do anything initially, it may do something later. So be careful out there. 
Well, Microsoft uh, released an emergency out of band update to fix the issue we talked about on Friday, which has been causing the Windows domain controllers to crash. Uh, and that was, of course, a memory leak. Uh, the March 2024 Patch Tuesday updates, when you install those on your domain controllers, pretty much regardless of the platform, 2012, 2016, you name it. Uh, once you install those, of course, this memory leak and LSAS started. And once it reached some kind of, you know, heap exhaustion point, the whole place crashed and rebooted. And, you know, so, you know, the, but anyway, Microsoft publicly acknowledged this issue after they were approached by Bleeping Computer about it. And they did release fixes on the 22nd. So that was like Friday. Uh, so they are there, but they, they weren't pushed out. So you actually have to go to Microsoft, download the correct out-of-band update for your platform and then install it on your domain controller. Um, I presume this will get rolled up in the next patch Tuesday, but for now, this is the fix Microsoft is advocating and everyone is recommending that you do because unlike you know, a patch for hacking, this one's a patch for your server crashing. And if your domain controllers are flapping, as they say, um, that, as they also say, would be bad. Well, a United States federal court issued $9,918,000 as a penalty and an injunction against Scott Rhodes for making thousands of robocalls to consumers using spoofed information. Now, the United States in recent years began passing laws and regulatory guides and so forth, uh, depending on the agency, to try to protect consumers from robocalls. And, you know, yeah. But the Telephone Consumer Protection Act is one of those laws that got passed, and it specifically states that you cannot do spoofing. Now, if you don't know what spoofing on a robocall is, uh, basically you've seen it. It means that on your caller ID, something we all are very used to now, when you look at the caller ID, at least the call looks like it's coming from inside the house. Or, or locally, you know, so you get your area code and, and it may have a town or something like that. It may also have a fake name on it. Uh, one of the ones that they had been doing, uh, not, this was not Scott Rhodes, mind you, but there was one that, that says Internal Revenue Service. And in the U.S., you know, getting a call from the IRS ranks somewhere ahead of intestinal parasites in terms of things people are afraid of getting. Guinea worms are pretty high up there, along with bot fly larva. And don't Google those things. Or Google them and eat a big bowl of clam chowder while you watch the videos. Like some people are like that. Um, whatever. But anywho, uh, Scott Rhodes' actions were called illegal and malicious. Uh, Rhodes was launching a bunch of robocalls against specific regions with like inflammatory material. It wasn't even like a scam. It was just like, I want to make you mad, you know, so troll level master. Um People had reported the calls as harassment. There were some involving the murder of a woman, uh, you know, just stuff like that. But people were reporting these as harassment to the FCC, and that led them to investigate Fine Scott Rhodes, who's a resident of Idaho and Montana. Uh, I don't know why you need to be a resident of both Idaho and Montana, but okay, whatever. But back in August of 2023, the FCC had already issued a $300 million fine to companies that had placed over 5 billion, with a B, robocalls. Uh, by the way, did you know your car's warranty may have expired and your car is possessed by a demon named Pazuzu? You know, you know that one? Vomit demon? Yeah, really gnarly. Going to cost a lot to get that cleaned, so you might want to renew that today. But Scott Rhodes is now in hot water about this. So if you were thinking about doing some of these kind of things, even if it was just trolling, you may actually come under fire. So, you know, keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to try to say it again. Strella Steer. <laughs> Strella Steeler. Strella Steeler, which sounds like a country music act in 1963. Strella Steeler and... And the Cowboys, yeah, that kind of thing. Strella Steeler is an email credential stealer, hence the name. Uh, and it has uh, impacted more than 100 separate organizations in the, uh, in the EU and the United States. The attacks are basically spam email with attachments that launch a DLL payload. Uh, Unit 42 said that the email attachments are regularly updated in each wave of the attacks. So that means you're not seeing the same signatures, you're not seeing the same kind of subject lines and so forth, which makes it harder to detect. 
Uh, but Strella Steeler was first seen back in November of 2022, and it was originally found by DCSO underscore SciTech on their blog. Unit 42 said the recent campaign was launched in late January and is targeting multiple industries in the uh, European Union and the United States. The malware keeps being updated, so it gets delivered in all kinds of different ways, but lately it's been being delivered in zipped J script. Uh, and it employs an updated obfuscation technique in the DLL itself where they actually rig it so that if you look at the code or whatever uh, stuff is actually moved off the screen or out of the box and all kinds of little tricks like that. But I mean, basically, uh, these types of attacks work and they often lead to more attacks, you know, spear phishing attacks when they escalate. And big fleas have little fleas upon their back to bite them, right? Who do you think I am? Augustus de Morgan? I mean, but regardless, this this stuff works, and we all know it works, and we all talk about it all the time. But you definitely need to be vigilant uh, as you you know, because these things just keep popping up, so they're going to keep happening. Now, we were talking on PSW last week about CVSS severity ratings, a really cool show, uh, and we talked a lot about how there are all sorts of issues around the ratings and how they're used. Now, I always thought they were a guide, you know, so it was just general ideas, kind of like the speed limit signs, you know, so it's just a general guide, you know, I mean, I sort of around that area, but apparently there's a lot of policy out there in a lot of your organizations that sets criteria around things based on these uh, CVSS scores, which is concerning. I mean, you know, do you have to patch it? Well, if it's greater than this, you know, when do you wait and so forth? And all this ends up being related to a nice number that everybody loves because everybody likes to see a number that says this is the number. Well, I mean, there's always going to be pressure then. Uh, and this was some of the stuff we were talking about. There's always going to be pressure in both directions to score things a certain way, depending on your point of view, right? Uh, some people would like it scored higher. Uh, I guess that would be the people that developed the, mal uh, the, the exploit. Uh, other people would like it scored lower so they don't have to patch it and on and on and on. But there were two DNS sec vulnerabilities that were disclosed last month that had this, they, have, they had very similar descriptions and they had the same severity score, but they aren't the same issue. Okay, well, I mean, that's nothing new either, right? But one of them is called Key Trap, and it was found by Germany's National Research Center for Applied Security, or Athene. Uh, and it was described as one of, by them as one of the worst ever discovered. Uh, I'm sorry, it was described by Akamai as one of the worst ever discovered since it could be used to disable large parts of the Internet. You know, so that's kind of like saying the flamethrower is a useful device, but this particular model may go off. You know, the whole canister may explode. Uh, so that sounded pretty bad. The other one was found by Peter Sh uh, Spacek. Uh, from the Internet Systems Consortium and was listed as a CPU exhaustion risk. So, you know, okay. But then Athene came back and said that this second one that Mr. Spacek found was of no consequence. It was rated 7.5. Now, the one that Athene found was also rated 7.5. Now, I mean, there is a method to this, right? I mean, they MITRE has a specific method, and everybody who sets up these CVSS scores has their own specific methods of doing it. But basically, it's supposed to help you decide how much risk there is with certain things and how you should proceed based on your own policy guide. But here is an example of two similar slash not similar issues that have the exact same score, very similar descriptions, and different people saying how severe they are, which is the way risk always works, right? I mean, some people say skating on that pond, eh, you know, it's a 7.5 and somebody else says, yeah, it's a 7.5. Let's go. But, you know, ski slopes are the same way. You know, there's a double black diamond. That one's a double black diamond. I had, I was uh, guiding some people once from Indiana and, and she said, we ski double black diamonds all the time. So I took them to this double black diamond at Breckenridge and they went, what the hell is this? It was like double black diamond. And they were like, this isn't like the double black diamonds in Indiana. And I was like, they actually have hills in Indiana. Like, or do you just like scoot along the ground? You know, I mean, I mean, I've seen double black diamonds in Michigan that were just like, you know, advanced cross country trails, but regardless. Anyway, I think it's, we, we all this is because we sort of misuse CVSS scores. Uh, we put too much stress on the number and too little stress on using that to do a risk assessment of that problem. But anyway, if you're using CVSS scores, or even if you aren't, this is an interesting article about how it works, 
how different people perceive things different ways and so forth. And, you know, check out that segment. It was on Paul's Security Weekly 800, number 821 with the very, very smart Josh Corman uh, for more information about it. Uh, notice how I qualified that, Josh. Um, so I couldn't resist this story. Um, I, now, I grew up near a lot of nuclear stuff, and, and my dad worked at, a, at a, new, a, you know, a secret nuclear laboratory, and I worked at the secret nuclear laboratory and so forth. And, you know, during my life, Three Mile Island happened. If you don't remember that, you can Google it. Uh, I got to see classified video of Chernobyl, which was one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen, and, you know, and so forth. And, you know, nuclear power was not that popular of a concept uh, back in my day. Uh, you know, and despite all the barrels of radioactive waste and such, nuclear is a fairly interesting choice. And it beats a hell out of burning boiled and compressed dinosaur juice to heat your home. But, you know, nobody wants a nuclear plant in their backyard either. You know, so when they come to the town and say, we're going to build a nuclear plant, everybody kind of runs for the doors, right? And like, no, I don't think so. But I mean, you can imagine trying to sell your house that backs up to the cooling ponds with two-headed ducks and maybe chuds grabbing your kids on occasion. But that, that you know, you, you can have more kids. I mean, and, and they're chuds, you know, that's what they do. You just, you just got to deal with chuds. But now, guess who doesn't care about chuds? AI. Now, AI does not care about chuds. They're not afraid of them. Not a chance. I, I asked Chad GPT how it felt about chuds, and it said, I don't really understand that reference, but okay, I guess. And I was like, okay. Now, AI, if you aren't familiar with it, uses massive amounts of power. And, you know, it uses a lot of wattage and so forth. And voila, a marriage made in a radioactive sludge pit. A startup called Any Edge has been trying to get approval to build AI data centers to, in fact, adjacent to a two gigawatt nuke plant in Waterford, Connecticut. Now, the AI facilities would consume as much as 13% of the power plant's output. And I guess the main concern from the residents was that they don't like them taking all the power for AI. Hmm, AI, alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, what could go wrong? I mean, she was an AI coder in the big city, but decided to chuck it all to return to the family's chud farm to try and save it from the bank. He was a simple chud milker with no future. Would sparks fly this week on the Sci-Fi Hallmark channel? I can crank those out like four a day if anybody needs. Anybody wants me to write Hallmark movies? I'm 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 there for you. All right. Well, the United States and Britain sanctioned China for running a 14-year-long hacking campaign which targeted White House officials, senior agency staff, senators, representatives, pretty much everybody. Uh, the U.S. Justice Department unsealed an indictment which, char uh, which charges seven named state-sponsored Chinese hackers with the campaign to target the U.S. and foreign critics, businesses, politicians, et cetera, et cetera. And, and they said that the objective here was to try and advance Chinese economic espionage and political spying goals. Yeah, of course. Now, the Treasury Department did announce sanctions on two of the hackers and a front company uh, was also targeted. And these two hackers in particular were breaching U.S. critical infrastructure, including the defense uh, industry and the energy industry. Now, the British government joined in all this with the Biden administration on Monday to sanction the hackers and the companies for targeting parliamentarians, which is uh, the equivalent in uh, the U.K., of the representatives and, and senators. And they also said that the, Uni the United Kingdom Electoral Commission systems were targeted between 2021 and 2022. The hackers were part of a group called APT31, which we've heard about before, which is also called Judgment Panda, which I kind of like. I mean, it's a Judgment Panda or Violet Typhoon, depending on who you ask. Now, Violet Typhoon sounds to me like what happened when Lou decided to drink all those sea breezes and blue whales in Hawaii that time. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, that was that was what I called that violet typhoon. But anyway, all this stuff was part of a cyber espionage program run by the Hubei uh, State Security Department in Wuhan. Uh, it's been operational since 2010. So this is an oldie but a goodie. Uh, kind of like Cozy Bear and all those. They've been around a long time. But most of the defendants in the case, uh, they're all named. So if you want to see their names, you can. Uh, they may be applying for jobs. Who knows? But most of the defendants are not in the West uh, and are most likely listed as being in China. Uh, so, you know, you probably won't be seeing them at DEF CON anytime soon. But then again, who knows? You may be walking through the Las Vegas airport and go, do I know that guy? Are you? Hey, are you part of Violet Typhoon? Yeah, you bet. 
Well, this is a tale of a meeting of two lonesome, skinny, fairly old white men on a planet which was dying fast. The skinnier of the two is Josh Marpet. Hi, Josh. You, do you know how old you are that chuds is a term you use normally? <laughs> Hey, everybody knows about chuds. No, 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 they don't. I would be willing okay, to be well, curious. You, you keep telling yourself that. How many you watchers should... and l- listeners know what a chud is without having to Google it? Okay, because I, honestly, I want them to Google it. Uh, no, you, you should Google it. It's a hilarious movie. It's horrible. It's like it's the the horrible nineteen eighties. Oh, it's awful. It's sci-fi hysterical. movie. No, it's a fun, fun sci-fi horror movie. And I actually remember what the acronym stands for, which is terrifying because I can barely remember what I had for breakfast. But uh, Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. Sounds like a party to me. That's how bad the movie was, let's be clear. But anyway, let's talk news. Let's talk news. So, (laughs) dear God. So I I, I put an article in, and I put it in a bit late. It should should be in the show notes already, uh, about Ray. I mean, we all know Ray, and Ray's got problems, okay? But if you don't know Ray... Ray is a uh, open source framework used in AI by a company called AnyScale. They're the developers and maintainers of it. And uh, Ray's got problems. I mean, we all know that Ray has some issues, but most of Ray's issues are patched. There is, however, a vulnerability in Ray, this open source AI framework, that was not patched. As a matter of fact, it's being disputed. And you know, you talked about CVSS scores just a minute or two ago. It's got a 9.8, and it's disputed. So not only is there no patch, but no uh, uh, SCA, uh, Software Composition Analysis, or SAST, SAST, uh, checker will flag on it because it's disputed. So when you vuln scan and, and, and software scan and code scan for this thing, it doesn't show up. But it's real. And according to uh, Bishop Fox and Bryce Beerchell and Protect AI and lately Oligo, Oligo scanned for it using things like Shodan and so on and so forth and found thousands of AI servers actively running this vulnerability. So are you saying that AI has bugs? Yes, if it's code, it can have bugs. I mean, let's be clear, all right? But the interesting thing, there's a couple of interesting things here is, one, it is a disputed bug, so it doesn't show up. It literally won't show up when you scan for it. And two, it's a bug on on an AI framework. And when it does a couple of the, sorry, the attackers are doing a few interesting things with it. One, they're installing crypto miners. Because what does AI use? According to your nuclear power story, it uses GPUs, right? And that's why they want to be close to the, to the nuclear power centers, because those GPUs suck in a hell of a lot of power, right? Secondly, what can you use GPUs for? I don't know, if you installed maybe like crypto miners? Oh, as a matter of fact, in one popular hashing pool, the, pe- the people that installed this uh, this vulnerability, uh, CVE 2023-48022-48022. We've had a few CVEs last year. Okay, let's be clear. Uh, the They're 148th out of 3,200 people in the hashing pool, in this pop- very, very popular hashing pool. They have a hell, they have about a billion dollars worth of GPUs at their disposal that they've stolen using this vulnerability. Or stolen the use of, I should say, theft of services, I guess. The other thing is they're installing root shells. So they get remote code execution. They get access to all the resources. They get access to everything, including any command history and prompt history. Oh, gee, you know that stuff you put in your prompt history for your internal AI? Oh, sorry. Now they have it. So that customer data you dropped in, they have it. Oh, wait, it gets better. If you use Hugging Face to help build your AI, uh, they found Hugging Face keys. In other words, your, your, your commit key to Hugging Face for your AI repository, because you're using it like GitHub effectively, uh, well, now they can inject their code in there, and now you've got a supply chain attack. So even if you weren't using Array, you can still be uh, compromised and still be adding your AI, your GPU power to their hashing pool. Isn't it nice of you to do that? I mean, come on. That's just a sweet thing for you to do is to donate to criminals the hashing power of your GPU that you paid tens of thousands of dollars for. And so uh, the creators of this vuln are so happy. The fact is, it's a hidden vuln. Now, so the, actually, what was interesting to me, and just there's so many things that are interesting, like what did they get? Uh, how are they doing it? And how come it's not been patched? This disputed vulnerability is something I never thought of before. Do you know how many disputed vulnerabilities there are? So there's no patch. They don't show up in a scanner. They don't exist effectively. They're, they're kind of invisible vulns. How many invisible, I like that, they're invisible vulns. How many invisible vulnerabilities there are with the CVSS score of nine or above? I don't know, and neither do you, but I bet there's a lot of them. 
So this is a fascinating problem. Like, how do you deal with a vulnerability that doesn't exist, but can still screw you over? Like, like, do we need to have CVSS researchers, CVE researchers that are going out there and going, okay, look, I found 20 vulnerabilities that may be relevant to us. Is there like an invisible vulnerability threat intelligence feed? Because there damn well should be. There damn well should be. And by the way, you know, now that the NVD isn't even doing anything, uh, they've put up the thing, they're putting a consortium together. And if anybody knows how to get into the consortium, let me know. I'd be fascinated to, to do a, a story on that. But the, the NVD, the National Vulnerability Database, literally has a thing saying, hey, we're not going to be processing any CVEs for a while. So you're not going to see any scores for anything new for a little while. We're building a consortium to deal with this. So like, oh, my God. And I think, Doug, uh, you wouldn't mind being on the advisory panel for that. So, yeah, if you, anybody knows how to get on that consortium, would you let us know? We'd honestly be really, really curious on that. And I think we're valid people to, to be there and help out. But anyway, so, so you've got invisible vulnerabilities, AI concerns, theft of GPU service. Like, this is mind boggling how bad this is. So in the article that I have the link for in the show notes, they have the IOCs. Please, if you use Ray, scan for the IOCs. There's some very solid IOCs. They're indicators of compromise, so you should be able to figure it out. And if anybody knows if there's an invisible vulnerability or whatever they're calling it, but a disputed vulnerability, invisible vulnerability database of any sort, Please let us know because I am fascinated by this now. I look, this is a 9.8, which means it's super easy to exploit and it's super impactful. That's literally the definition of the score. Okay. And there's no patch and it doesn't get seen by scanners. I, I know I've hit that like seven times. It's still so freaking me out. It's not even funny. Okay. Uh, the, the idea here is that, and by the way, just to be clear, it's not one or two people. There are thousands of Ray servers that are exposed and have been compromised, including some that were compromised before the vulnerability, uh, not, not even before the vulnerability was patched. There isn't a patch, but before these vulnerabilities were found. So it means that the criminals found it first. They've been exploiting it since 2023 sometime, early, early 2023, so they've, they've been exploiting this and stealing your GPU usage and stealing your secrets and performing supply chain attacks for over a year now. Yeah, we got problems, ladies and gentlemen. This is terrifying. So check your stuff. All right. And again, if you know of anybody doing uh, an invisible vulnerability threat feed, or if you know of anybody at the NVD, the National Vulnerability Database, putting that consortium together, please let us know. I really want to get in on that. Thank you. Ch chuds yeah <laughs> chuds <laughs> right I, i'm interested in the consortium too maybe josh and i can run it it's like that would be cool all right thank you josh and finally now i know you know this and i know you've heard it before and you'll hear it again but it's often easy to open hotel room doors and they often do demos of this stuff at defcon right I mean, I remember the first time I went to DEF CON with the Paul Security Weekly crew. Paul had John and Mark so paranoid, I think they huddled in the room with pointed sticks the whole first night. Or maybe that they went to Frankie's and that was actually me huddling in the room with a pointed stick. And there was this whole thing where I thought that homeless guy was talking to me. That was Patrick Stewart. And we were going to start a winery in Vouvray. And it turned out to be an old Dell Optiplex. But I digress. Uh, this article was talking about flaws in hotel room key cards. Uh, and they resulted in a hacking technique called unsafelock. Uh, uh, oh, I get it. Unsafe lock. Oh, it looked like unsafelock. I have problems with syllables. It, it, it's, it's a disease, but <laughs> unsafe lock, uh, which is a collection of vulnerabilities that allow pretty quick opening of safe lock, which I thought was saf lock or, or saflock. But safe lock, there's just no E, but uh, safe lock is a brand of RFID key card lock systems that are used in about 13,000 properties in 131 countries, representing something like 3 million doors. So yeah, there's a lot of them. Now, flipper zeros work too, right? I mean, they have, the article has a whole bunch of different references to ways that you can get to uh, get these doors to open. Apparently, there's a vulnerability collection there that is just being used openly. Obviously, like I said, flipper zeros can work. And, and then if you're Larry, you've got all kinds of other little tools and tricks or Tyler, and they can open the door. And of course, if all else fails, there's always the good old, you know, crowbar uh, approach, which is usually more my thing. So, I, you know, I don't know, sitting alone in the dark with Patrick Stewart, a samurai sword, two liters of holy water and a pint of ether. I mean, that's how every good Vegas story starts, right? I mean, 
But anyway, this is a fun story if you like such things uh, and so forth. So from the island of Elba, that is the news. Thank you, Josh. And I will see you Friday on the Security Weekly News.